In our last episode, we destroyed the third and final generator, which removed power from the oxygen pumps, keeping aliens alive on the other side of the decompression door. Now, at long last, we can finally open the northern door to the decompression chamber. As soon as we arrive on the other side, Sally gives us a handy reminder. Hey, don't forget to put on the astronaut suit before starting the decompression sequence. But if we're feeling like Mavericks and we don't want to listen to no girl, we can punch the button before putting on the spacesuit. <laughs> and our head explodes! Well, I think this girl knows exactly what she's talking about, so putting our spacesuit on first, we can then punch the button. The western door slides open, and immediately we see the results of our handiwork. Before us lie dead aliens strewn about. These aliens suffocated to death after we destroyed the generators keeping their oxygen pumps working. Moving forward, we open the door to the west, climb some stairs, open another door at the top of the stairs to find ourselves in a long hallway. To continue forward, we turn right, open an eastern door, sidestep more alien remains, head up the stairs and through another door. We arrive in an oval room. We see more dead aliens laying about. Before heading out, we can turn right and activate a wall-mounted terminal to open up the nearby door. Inside, we find two chests next to a table covered in alien biogel. When ready, we can head back to the oval room, face east, and open the door to the spacewalk. As we walk up a ramp, a hatch slides open above us, and we see that we're standing on the exterior fuselage of the alien ship. There's a saucer directly above us, and we can peer through windows below to watch aliens frantically scrambling around the hallways. All we see from this narrow strip of space are stars. I wanted to see if I could see the Earth walking over to the ledge. I tried to peer over it, but... Oh no! If we get too close, we float off into space and die. Well, looks like there's no time for sightseeing. We need to remain on task. There are three fuses, so to speak, that have popped out. In order to reactivate the teleporters, we've got to push these back into the ship. We now have to wander about until we find each one.
find ourselves in a small room, and stepping forward we complete the quest Among the Stars and begin the quest This Galaxy Ain't Big Enough. But before we can go any farther, we need to repressurize this room. So pushing the big switch in the middle of the room, we can walk around and loot crystals until this room is repressurized. When it is, the door slides open. Stepping through, we see a bunch of worker aliens, and it looks like we've found a teleporter room that leads right to the engineering core. We see the engineering core hologram hovering above this teleporter. Before we activate it, we can loot two chests on the ground next to an air vent, and then head to the big button next to the teleporter to activate it. I'll get the door. Sally crawls through that air vent, while the rest of our companions teleport in. Exciting, isn't it? I've never seen this part of the ship before. Thanks, Sally. Moving forward, we arrive in a large room. Don't see any worker aliens, though. And in the middle of the floor... Oh, my goodness. It's Earth. It's so pretty, isn't it? Didn't think I'd ever see something like this. That's really something. Almost enough to make you forget we're running for our lives up here. Not really the time for gawking. Sorry, I should get the door. Hang on, okay? No wonder we couldn't see it from on top of the ship. The ship is hovering directly above it. This is an incredibly important sight. I can't count how many times viewers will leave a comment asking, Well, sure, America burned a nuclear fire, but what about the rest of the world? Well, here it is. We see hurricanes off in the distance, and everything below the clouds is... Green. Now, we only see one hemisphere of the Earth from this angle, so I suppose we really don't know what's happening on the other side. It's kind of hard to make out, but I think we are right above the east coast of North America. Those, I think, are the Great Lakes. And that must be the Atlantic. And if so, then that means that there are hurricanes in the North Atlantic. We see two hurricanes out to sea, and the little of Earth we do see is a sickly nuclear green. I'm shocked that there's enough nuclear fallout left on Earth that we could see its effects from space. But then again, we do get rad storms. If there's enough fallout in the atmosphere 200 years after the apocalypse to produce radiation storms, then well, I suppose we would be able to see it from Earth. But we don't have long to gawk at Earth. We soon get interrupted. <laughs> Did you see that? Scary, but also kind of a stupid move on their part, don't you think? What the hell was that? Pretty obvious, wasn't it? They're putting on a big show trying to scare us. It means we're getting under their skin. That's a good thing. Of course, now it looks like we've got a big death ray thing we need to take down before they blow up the whole damn planet. But it's nice to know we're having an effect, don't you think? I have no idea what he said, but he sounded pretty angry. Oh, come on. You don't need to understand it to get the point. Some kind of a threat. And if they're threatening us, it's a good bet we are starting to scare them a bit. Now, you ask me. We need to find out what that was and make sure it doesn't happen again. But at least we know we're getting somewhere. We need to find out what that was and put a stop to it. Yeah, sure. No question about that. But if you ask me, seeing that was kind of good news. Means we're making some headway, you know? Really getting under their skin. Well, I think Soma's right. They do sound scared. I sure hope they don't figure out where we are. This time I don't think they're going to put me back in the cell. That's true. They have been treating Sally like a bit of a pet up until now, but if they catch her again, what will they do to her? More than our neck is on the line. Heading through the door that Sally opened after climbing through the air vent, we see a room to the right. I think we're getting closer. There's a teleporter here and a pile of crystals on a nearby shelf. Oh no! They turned this one off too! 
You're going to have to find the other end and turn it back on. Forget the teleporter. Let's just go. That doesn't seem like a very good idea. If they turned it off, that means they know we're here. And they're probably waiting on the other side of that door. It'd be smarter if just one person went and checked it out. Don't worry. We'll be safe right here. Good luck. You sure this is a good idea? I think so. Seems like they're getting even more angry at us. Okay, you wait here. I'll see if I can find the controls. Good luck. We'll stay right here and wait for you. Doggone aliens, we've been thwarted again. We now have to reactivate this teleporter. To do so, we open the northern door to enter the weapons lab. Creeping down a hallway, we can turn left to access a wall-mounted terminal to overload the nearby turrets. We are in a large, vaulted chamber. Our path goes on to the southwest and we see two doors to the right. The first one is a deactivated teleporter room, and the second one is another deactivated teleporter room. So that leaves us only one path forward, to the southwest. We find one container lying by some machinery. Ah! ah! I thought I got those turrets. Well, now the aliens have found us. I'm just too far away from this guy. I'm not gonna play this game. Running forward to find a door, we see that one to the southeast is blocked with the force field, but the one directly west of us is open. Heading through, we can access another wall-mounted terminal to activate a nearby door. Heading through the door, we see a chest on the ground, some alien power modules and cells, don't forget the cells, lying on a shelf next to a giddy-up buttercup. And lying on a shelf directly beneath the buttercup is the unique weapon, the Atomic Pulverizer. It's extremely easy to miss this weapon because it looks exactly like an alien atomizer and it's sitting right next to one. The Atomic Pulverizer is a unique version of the alien atomizer. It deals 37 damage, which is only a few points higher than the atomizer. However, its action point cost is only 12 compared to the alien atomizer's 20. This gives the weapon the distinction of having the second lowest action point cost, tied with the Ritual Knife from Point Lookout, meaning that you can get almost twice as many attacks in with a single bar of AP compared to using the Alien Atomizer. It also has a critical chance multiplier of times two compared to the Atomizer's times one. All of this combined brings the DPS up to 111 compared to the Atomizer's 105, and the damage per action point up to 3.1 compared to the Atomizer's 1.8. Aside from that, it shares many of the other distinctive features of the Atomizer, including its zero spread, which means that this weapon, like the Atomizer, has dead-on accuracy. After turning around and looting some alien epoxy and biogel on a nearby shelf, we could activate this guard drone if we wanted it. We can use the tool we got in Robotics Assembly to activate this Guardian drone, which brings him along as a temporary companion. Then we can head on out. The door directly across from this room just leads to another deactivated teleporter. So going down the hallway, we have two paths. We can turn right, where we kill an alien. <laughs> or we can turn left. The left path is blocked with a force field, so turning around, we'll head north. This path then splits right and goes up some stairs. This brings us down a long hallway with portholes out into space that again splits, but the right path is blocked with a bunch of machinery, so we'll turn east. At the end of this hallway, we find another alien. This brings us to the ledge on top of the room where we first entered. This is where we were having that sniper match with the alien that we just killed. We can use the nearby healing archway to heal on up and then press the big button here, which removes the force field barrier on the door below. Oh. 
with these aliens dead, we can finally head downstairs and start looting. We find a bunch of gems and alien epoxy on a nearby shelf. But to continue, we move through the southern door. This is the door that had a force field blocking it, which we turned off from above. After killing a drone and an alien in here, we find two chests on the ground. The northern room is a deactivated teleporter. So turning around, we find another container under a console. The southern door is another deactivated teleporter. So our only way forward is to move east. Heading down this hallway, we can snipe at aliens on the level above. We find only one chest on the bottom floor of this very large room. To move on, we have to move to the southeastern corner of it and climb a staircase to the catwalk level above. Here we find a chest next to a southern door. And moving through it, we can attack a guardian drone. This brings us to a large room with observation windows on either side. A door is blocked with a force field to the right. We can move southeast to open a chest on the ground, and then move down to the control floor, where we can loot the enemies we just destroyed, and destroy some new ones. When done, we can turn around to find another control. Activating it gives us captive recorded log number 24. Well, we have seen plenty of them on the ship. I suppose they had to get them somewhere. Turning west, we can bypass the force field opening for now and instead peer through a window. We don't see anything out there, but we do see a gun hologram above us, pushing the button. Oh. Oh. Pushing the other button. Ah, okay. So that's what they use Brahmin for. Well, we can punch the button next to the force field to disable it and head inside. We see Brahmin remains all over the place. And it looks like two Guardian drones were the ones shooting at them. The Guardian drones we find here are not initially hostile, but if we decide to destroy them, we notice that they have unique names. Experimental Weapons Drone. After destroying them, on one, we find the unique item, the Drone Cannon XB. The Drone Cannon XB is a unique version of the Drone Cannon. The difference between the Drone Cannon XB and the regular Drone Cannon is in the way the electric projectile works. As you recall in my video on the hangar when I went over the Drone Cannon, the Drone Cannon lobs these big explosive electric energy balls that bounce once and then detonate after a few seconds. The Drone Cannon XB works very differently. Instead, the balls of energy detonate upon impact. They don't bounce. Otherwise, the stats of this are almost identical to a Drone Cannon. Each do 40 damage, have a DPS of 466.7 and do 100 explosive damage. They have a times one critical chance multiplier, do 50 critical damage, and cost 30 action points, dealing 4.7 damage per action point. Not very effective and pretty expensive in VATS, but a wonderful gun to use outside of VATS. When done in this room, we can head out, and if we turn south, we see a series of three tables and three shelves lined with all sorts of goods. We find alien power cells on one shelf with a chest underneath, combat armor, and a Tesla power armor suit on a table next to some frag mines. Perfect, this will match our Tesla power armor helmet. On a shelf next to this is a whole bunch of alien epoxy, and on a table next to this is alien biogel, pulse grenades, plasma mines, plasma grenades, another Gatling laser, crystals next to two atomizers and a disintegrator, and then a stash of ammunition including microfusion cells and energy cells next to a plasma rifle, a plasma pistol, and some metal armor. They really cause you to make hard decisions about what you can take back with you. We can't walk away with it all. Wind on looting, we can move northeast. We we'll see a dining table here covered in food and two doors out of here. One to the east and one to the north. Heading through the northern door first, we pass a teleporter to our right and an alien worker. I'm sure his friends will get us in a minute. There's a chest on the ground near to the western wall, and moving to the end of this hallway, we see a healing archway, and then what's this? Some sort of rifle range? We see a button here, 
Upon pressing it, nothing happens quite yet. There's a disintegrator and an atomizer lying here. Oh. Uh, a death claw? Oh, and raiders. There are three teleportation pads down there, summoning in raiders and death claw to battle it out. I suppose we could participate. Whoa! Oh my god. <laughs> okay, I don't think that's supposed to happen. <laughs> We suddenly get the Xenotech Expert perk. Our training experience with alien weaponry has made us a Xenotech Expert. This amazing perk increases the damage we deal when using alien weapons by 20%. We get this perk when 10 enemies or more are killed in this rifle range. The funny thing about it is that they don't have to die by our hands. You saw that I had just opened fire immediately before getting this perk. Most of these raiders had been killed by the Deathclaw. So as long as 10 enemies die here, we get the perk. It doesn't matter who kills them. This awesome perk affects every single alien weapon we find here on the ship, including the two alien weapons we can find on Earth, the Fire Lance and the Alien Blaster, with the exception of two weapons, the Electro Suppressor, which is the baton we found in the engine room, and the unique weapon that the captain of this ship wields, which we'll talk about when we get there. So strangely enough, even though those are both alien weapons, this perk does not affect them. With the enemies dead, we can turn around and head south. We find another firing range here, but looking immediately to our right, we discover another unique weapon called the Destabilizer. The Destabilizer is a unique version of the Alien Disintegrator, but the biggest change is that this is a fully automatic rifle. Because it's fully automatic, its base damage is a bit weaker. It deals only 30 damage compared to the Disintegrator's 65. But because it's automatic, it does 4.5 shots per second compared to the Disintegrator's 2. It also has a much weaker critical chance multiplier because it's automatic, with a critical chance multiplier of only 0.44 compared to the Disintegrator's 2. And it does less critical damage, 20 compared to 50, and it has higher spread, 1.5 spread compared to the Disintegrator's 1. But it does cost fewer action points, costing only 25 compared to the Disintegrator's 30. That said, everything considered, it deals only 1.2 damage per action point compared to the Disintegrator's 2.2, but outside of VATS, it has a damage per second of 135 compared to the Disintegrator's 130. It also has a strange quirk. When used in VATS, even though it's an automatic rifle, it only fires one round, which makes no sense as an automatic weapon. So this is really only useful outside of VATS. Thankfully, I do a lot of gunplay outside of VATS, so I think I'm really going to enjoy this. The button we found next to this weapon activates a teleporter at the end of this rifle range, and it summons a Brahmin. We can have fun killing as many of these Brahmin as we want until we kill three. For some reason, after three, it no longer generates any more, probably because the teleporter pad is clogged with dead Brahmin. We can use the nearby teleporter to teleport down to the rifle range. And here we can loot the Brahmin if we want, and we can see exactly why this thing no longer works. Well, it was fun while it lasted. But we see that this is a dead end. So to continue, we need to turn around and go back into the next room. This time we'll go through the eastern door. This brings us up some stairs, through a small room, and then across a hallway where we find the door to the experimentation lab. But we'll have to save the experimentation lab for tomorrow's video. In our next episode, we'll attempt to do something about that death ray because these aliens are threatening Earth. And at last, we will uncover the horrifying truth about what these aliens are doing to their human captives. To find out, be sure to tune in tomorrow for our next episode. I publish many new videos every single week, so if you want to make sure you don't miss a single one, be sure to subscribe and to click that 
bell notification button. I have a t-shirt shop with a whole bunch of wonderful, unique designs. You can get my designs on shirts in a wide array of colors and in a variety of both men's and women's sizes. My designs also come in a bunch of other stuff, mugs, pillows, posters, prints. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, for episode 8.